Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. This is the spring 2022 semester. This is the first part of the first module. I am going to give you an overview of the course for this semester. This course is taught in a hybrid format, so you'll meet in class four times, and the rest of it will be through these asynchronous sessions like this, where I give you an overview of the current material for each week. There's 14 weeks, so 14 modules. In addition, there's also a weekly Zoom meeting during the semester. All of this information is published to the internet, so you're, if you're not a student of Washington University, you're certainly invited to follow along. You just won't get the direct interaction with me or assignments graded, obviously. So this is the course website in GitHub. It's located here. There's a link to this in the description. For each of these, you can open it in Google Colab or you can simply view it in GitHub. I generally recommend that you open it in Colab. I'll do that here. You'll see that we switch out of GitHub which is not as sophisticated at even viewing as Colab is. I've, there's some minor issues that you'll see with some of the course material if you view it in GitHub. Colab also lets you run your neural networks and other things literally right in the browser, and they give you a GPU even. Colab is an awesome, awesome deal, and most of the students do complete this course with Colab. If you've got your own local GPUs on your personal computer, you can certainly make use of those as well. So each module, and this is module one, has five parts. And you'll have links like this at the very top. You'll see all the videos. If you click on this video, you'll be playing this video. Endless loop, I guess. If you go to the notebook, you'll also come right to this notebook. So you can jump around to any of the material for module one. Module one gives you an introduction to Python. Python, it's good if you've dealt with Python before this course, but not completely required. You'll have a little more work, definitely at the beginning, if you're picking up Python as well. You are expected to have at least learned one programming language before this course. Otherwise, this will be very difficult if you're literally learning programming and neural networks at the same time. There's other links here that are, zoom that in a little bit, there's other links here that will be useful, like how to submit an assignment locally, how to use GoGo Colab to submit an assignment, and then various installation instructions down here. Like I said, most students do run this through Colab, but you can certainly run it on your local computer as well. Running on your local computer requires a, a decent amount of setup to get the GPU working, to get Python and the associated TensorFlow Keras libraries going. At the top of each module, you're going to see this, Google Colab Instructions. This is just some code that gets Colab in sync. It tells it that we do want the 2x versions of TensorFlow. It sets a little flag here to say Colab is true. That way I can go and find and know that we're using Colab or not. I don't use this flag a lot because most of it just works seamlessly. If Colab is not here, it just prints out that it's not using Colab and it goes on its way. So assignments. You'll get an icebreaker assignment. And the icebreaker assignment you complete in Canvas. You're going to just introduce yourself. And I will reply to these. So if you want to answer some, ask me some questions in there, talk about maybe what you're interested in, deep learning, machine learning, if you want to mention career directions, anything that you might want just initial comments on or ask if the course is going to cover it, let me know, because if the course doesn't cover something, I may try to work it in if it's, if it's an area that I do have some experience with. There's a Kaggle project and a final project. These two you'll complete with teams. And I will, I don't assign you into teams. I let you pick your own teams. We're going to try making the teams a little bit smaller this time. Previously, they had been five students. I'm going to limit it to three students this time just to try to make sure that the, the work is being evenly distributed amongst the students. And then I will also have all three of you rate your team members just to make sure that everybody is pulling the weight expected of them in the team. And then the final project, 
That's where you'll do a write-up on basically a cutting edge paper. These are all the assignments. The first assignment is very easy. It just checks to see that you can use the API key that I should have emailed you earlier. If you didn't get your API key yet, send me an email through WashU and I will see that that gets to you. Just have to run it to show that you can go through the motions of submitting an assignment. You can watch the video on how to submit an assignment that will help you through that. I am your instructor, Jeff Heaton. You can see a picture of me there. You can see a picture of me in your camera. I am, I teach one class here at Washington University. I teach this class on deep learning. I'm an adjunct instructor. Academia is not my full-time career. I, fub I published a few papers. There are plenty of real professors here at WashU. I'm not one of them. I'm an industry guy. I'm a vice president of data science at a company here in St. Louis called RGA. We're a Fortune 300 insurance company. And I create models and more so help implement models for high capacity use into the cloud for use in scoring individuals for underwriting to determine which people are good risks, which people are bad risks for the life insurance industry. I do hire interns from my students here. So if you're interested in an internship, and the timing's right, who knows? My group does usually take a couple of interns during the summers in particular. Let's see, what else about me? I have a couple of certifications there. I'm a sen senior member of the IEEE. And I am very, I'm pretty active in social media. I have a YouTube channel with 60,000 and growing subscribers and 10K or so followers on Twitter and growing. So I, I post stuff that interests me in machine learning and deep learning to social media, and it attracts a following, not a crazy big following, but more and more people. So that's, that's kind of fun. So here are some of the resources, Google Colab, that can be used to run your neural networks in a web environment through the cloud that you don't have to install locally. If you do want to install locally, you're gonna need Python Anaconda. Either way, you'll be using Jupyter Notebooks, which is what this is. It's a, just a way to mix code and markdown to, to give you pages that look really pretty similar to this. TensorFlow is the library that we're using for deep learning. There's also PyTorch, PyTorch and TensorFlow Keras. TensorFlow and Keras are sort of merged into the same thing, but usually you can just call it Keras. So Keras and PyTorch are the two major competitors in this space right now. I wouldn't say that any of them is necessarily crazy far ahead of the other, but PyTorch has really caught up a lot of ground on Keras. So who knows, maybe someday I will switch this course from TensorFlow Keras to PyTorch. What do you think of that? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to follow along with this, subscribe to the channel. That way you will uh, see when new course material comes out. So what is deep learning? In particular, what is machine learning? Deep learning is just neural networks, only deeper. And we have better ways to train them now that they can go deeper. Traditional software development was you would get input data, you would get program code, you would write the program code to process the input data, feed it into the computer, and you would get output. Machine learning program, you get input data, you get output data, you feed those into the computer, and the computer writes your program code. Learning from data. So we'll see, like in a Kaggle competition, last semester I gave them virtual images of cities and they had to calculate how many square feet were in the city, and they used a variety of methods to do that. The Kaggle competition is a major part of this course. You'll be competing against your fellow students and others from the internet that come in to join you. These are kind of the three areas that you'll use deep learning for, predictive modeling. This is where you have columns, I mean, Excel-like, you have columns, and then you're trying to predict one of those columns because you have this column filled in for a lot of data, but you don't have it for everything. You're either using regression to predict a number, you're using classification to predict a class. That is, you can certainly use deep learning for that, but deep learning is so much better for computer vision, time series, and natural language processing. So computer vision, here you can see it's turning images into some sort of a label or a class. 
time series, it's trying to predict the future from the past. And like I said, regression, you're trying to predict some sort of a number, classification, you're trying to predict a class. And in deep learning, it can be a combination of both. You can predict both a class and a number. Or you can predict an image. The output of a neural network can be almost anything. Like I mentioned here, neural networks, typically, they'll be dealing with an image, a series of numbers that can be text, audio, or some other form of time series, and then regression and classification. So what are neural networks? Well, the big four of neural networks is, are Jan LeCern, Jeffrey Hinton, Yashua Bengio, and Andrew Ning. The three on the left here actually won the Turing Prize. It's kind of like computer science's Nobel Prize for their contributions to deep learning. For some reason, Andrew Ning did not get in on that party. I don't know why. I've watched MOOCs from him, and he, he's great, but... These three, for some reason, are the ones that got the, got the prestigious award for it. But all of these, you'll see, you'll see papers from them as we go through the class. They've invented most of the underlying technology for this stuff. So why deep learning? There's other types of models out there. There's support vector machines, random forest, gradient boosted machines. You're able to use these if it's tabular data, and they'll probably do better than deep learning. This is a famous chart by Andrew Ning. You can see the older algorithms. And again, if you're an academic studying something, you'll name your technology. Everything else is older algorithms. So here, the older algorithms are outperforming deep learning until there's some magic tipping point where you have enough data that deep learning can really, really kick in. And generally, I find that true. However, this does flatten out, too. It doesn't just expand into infinity. Deep learning will learn about convolution neural networks and recurrent neural networks. Those are advances that make them particularly capable. So Python for deep learning, the two, the two biggies are TensorFlow Keras and PyTorch, like I said. We are focusing on TensorFlow Keras. However, you're going to see PyTorch a couple of times. This course is on the applications of deep neural networks, not the theory of them. So a few times, we're going to use something that was written in PyTorch, like NVIDIA StyleGAN 3 and also YOLO v5, which are two types of neural networks that allow you, one allows you, YOLO allows you to recognize multiple images, and StyleGAN lets you generate very realistic looking but fake images. Software installation. I have links here for each of the major ways that you might want to do this. I really do recommend considering Colab. It is a completely self-contained way to do it. You don't have to install a lot of things. But if you run into some problems with, the, with these, maybe try installing before the first class. And I often spend sometimes up to an hour after the first class just helping people install stuff. So I'm glad to, to help you. I, Thanks to helping students, I've ran into a lot of issues that you might run into, and I'd, I'd be glad to help you as well. So the Python introduction, we're going to use Anaconda, and then we're also going to use Jupyter Notebooks. If you do want an IDE, PyCharm is what I use, and we'll also use Matplotlib a lot, just to get an idea of the visualizations of some of the neural networks that we're dealing with. Jupyter Notebooks, that allows you to put code and math and everything together. And you'll want to make sure you have the right version of Python. It should be Python 3, I would say 3.7 or higher. And if you run this code, it's going to print this out. So TensorFlow 2.4, this is a little bit dated. We'll be using 2.6, I believe is the current version, and Cura's will be the same. We'll be using Python 3.9. So you should run those and be able to see this. I do need to rerun this page and re-upload it. It'll either tell you the GPU is available or not available. You don't need the GPU for everything in this course, but it will be helpful for a lot of the training. Python, TensorFlow, Pandas, Scikit-Learn. These are the big packages that we are making use of in this course. And then off to the Module 1 assignment. It All you have to really do for it is... Get your API key that I gave you so that you don't get this forbidden error. Yeah, and put it in here. And then just run it. You should be done at that point. 
Okay, thank you for watching this video, and if you're interested in this course and following along, or my other projects on deep learning and artificial intelligence, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and if this video was like was helpful, please give it a like. Thank you very much.